Moses. Moses. Your father has called me God. And I am. I have made you an orphan of grace. I have sustained you in the house of the king. Now see your purpose. For I have heard the cries of my people. I have seen the weight of their oppression. And I have come down to deliver them. And I will stretch out my hand against Egypt and guide my people to a land I have prepared. I will make you my mouthpiece. I will make you a shadow of one greater to come. I will lead you as I have led you. Now go! And you will see what I will do to Pharaoh. What's up, friends and fam in the room? My name's Nathan. I'm so glad you're here. I'm one of the pastors. Hey, look, if you're joining us online, I'm glad you're there. But I wish you were here because I am getting ready to drop a big announcement on you guys. So here's my favorite, like big news, man. I'm excited about it. But uh, listen, I don't want, don't text this to anybody. Don't share it on social media yet. Like I just want us to enjoy it in the room and then like we'll unpack it like to everybody else later. Um, but here's the big news. You ready for this? So excited about it. <laughs> We are having a baby. So fired up about it. In Exodus 2, a baby is going to be born, and we are, we're going to read the story of the baby born. You, you cats didn't think I was going to have a baby, were you? Like, my wife is leaving right now. Like she is out. She's like, bye, Felicia. Like, no, no, we're not having a baby. We are having a baby. In, in, this, in Exodus chapter 2, a really famous baby. Some of y'all were like, uh-uh, no, no, that was an accident. No, it says famous baby. Famous baby is going to be born in Exodus chapter 2. And so we're going to do, like, I, I was, we're going to do what, what everybody does when they find out that they're going to have a baby. We're going to have a gender reveal party, okay? So uh, I don't know if you know what a gender reveal party is. It's all the rage right now. It's when you gather a bunch of family and friends together and uh, you find out together who, what the baby is going to be, if it's going to be a boy or a girl. So there's tons of creative ways to do it. And uh, so as I was researching those, what's even better than, than, than gender reveals are when gender reveals go wrong, okay? I ran across some videos this week, and this, I just want to show you, this is a compilation of my absolute favorite, funniest gender reveal fails. You got to check this out. Look at it. What does that mean, Kenzie? It's a sister. It is a sister. Are you upset? Oh, buddy. <laughs> you don't want a sister? But you'll have a little sister. Boys are disgusting. <laughs> Open it up. What color is it? Blue. What does that mean? It's a boy. It's a boy. <laughs> I want it to be a girl. <laughs> I want it to be a girl. <laughs> oh, but having a baby brother is going to be so much fun. Look what it says. <laughs> what? It says, Daisy, I can't wait to meet you. <laughs> Love from your little brother. <laughs> Baby brother. I want I want to have a little baby girl. 
bought you some blue sweeties. Can I have them now? <laughs> Them now. You can have them now because they're from your little baby brother. Yay! Do you love your little baby brother? No. Man, so good. All right, so here's what we're going to do we're going to do a gender reveal party together here. N nobody knows what's. I'm going to pop this balloon. Either in the balloon is blue confetti or pink confetti, depending on what type of baby we're going to have in Exodus chapter 2. I don't know what we're going to have. You don't know what we're going to have. And nobody knows what we're going to have unless you've read the book of Exodus chapter 2. It's going to be a complete surprise. So I want us to be able to find out together. So here it is. You ready for this? I'm going to get the knife out. We're going to pop it. Big time. Big excitement. Verse 1. About this time, a man and a woman from the tribe of Levi got married. The woman became pregnant and she gave birth to a... It's a boy. My Bible doesn't say this. I don't know if yours says this, but I'm pretty sure the baby's mom immediately said, but I wanted it to be a little girl. <laughs> because it's a boy is terrible news. Remember what we learned last week? There's an edict out in the land that all of the, all of the new Hebrew boys, babies would be immediately killed by the Pharaoh. And so for this woman to give birth in chapter 2 of Exodus and find out, oh, it's, it's a boy, that would have been devastating news. She's faced with a really difficult situation right now because if anybody finds out, like, right, when you have a baby, you want everybody to celebrate, you want everybody to be excited, but she can't do that because if something finds out, then the baby is going to be killed. And so that's terrible news for him. The Pharaoh wanted all of the Hebrew, the Israelite baby boys killed uh, because they were a threat. Because you know what happens to little baby boys, right? Little baby boys grow up to be fierce fighting warrior men. And he was afraid that one day there would be so many Hebrews, so many Israelites in Egypt that, that they would overthrow the government. So the solution was any baby boy that was born has to be immediately killed. But this mom had a plan. <laughs> You see, this mom in Exodus chapter 2 is not like every other mom. This is the MacGyver of moms in the book of Exodus here because she comes up with this incredible plan. This mother makes a basket out of the reeds that are on the side of the Nile River. And then she takes some tar or some pitch and she puts it on the inside and outside of the basket so that the basket will float and it'll be waterproof. And here's what she does. She takes her brand new baby boy and puts that baby in the basket, places the basket in the Nile River. Crazy, right? I mean, I can't even get my kids out of my driveway without like triple checking that they have their car seats in, right? And this woman put her kid in a river. But like I said, this woman has a plan because she didn't just place it in any part of the river. She put it in a very specific place in the Nile River, the place where the princess of Egypt, the Pharaoh's daughter, was known to take a bath. Because this mother knew the same thing that I know, the same thing that you know, and it's this. No one can resist that sweet, soft, cuddly, newborn baby look and smell, right? You ever look at a baby and like all of a sudden you get baby fever? You're like, you know, I could give it another run, right? And then your wife comes in and is like, remember all the sleepless nights? Remember all the diapers? Remember all the money? And you're like, you know what? You're right. I think I just want to hold this baby and then give it back to its owner uh, in a few minutes. And so, like, she knew that once that princess laid her eyes on this sweet baby and got that new baby smell, like, she would be smitten by it. And, and that's exactly what happened. She puts the baby in the water, floats it down the Nile. The princess sees it. She immediately says, I got to have this. Like, I got to keep this baby. This baby is soft and sweet and cuddly and smells good and looks good and it's awesome. But then it hits her. This is a Hebrew baby and this is a Hebrew baby boy which means she can't take this kid home. Her dad just signed it into law that any Hebrew baby boy that was found had to be immediately killed. So if her dad knows that she's got this new Hebrew baby boy, like he is going to flip. So she says, I got to hide this thing. I got to come up with some plan. I got to do something to make sure that this baby is taken care of because I can't take care of it at home. I want to, but I can't. Like I, I can't feed it. I can't take care of it. Who's going to feed this baby and nurse this baby? Who is going to take care of this baby? And a matter of a fact, do you know there was actually someone immediately available for the job that just opened up? 
It was the baby's mama. Scripture says that the princess found that there was a lady that would make herself available to help raise a baby if a princess had just happened to find a baby floating down the middle of the Nile River. And that's exactly what happened in in Exodus chapter 2 and verse 9. Here's what the princess told her. He said, take this baby and nurse him for me, the princess told the baby's mother. I will pay you for your help. So the woman took her baby home and nursed him. Later, when the boy was older, his mother brought him back to Pharaoh's daughter, who adopted him as her own son. The princess named him Moses, for she explained, I lifted him out of the water. Now listen, you don't have to be a mom to know that's a sweet deal, right? Usually when you have a baby, it costs you money. This gal is going to get paid to raise her own baby. Somebody's going to pay her to feed her own kid, to babysit her own baby. Like, this is a dream job, right? It's amazing that the Pharaoh, she went from my baby boy is going to be killed by the Pharaoh to now the Pharaoh's daughter is going to pay me to raise my own baby boy. And that just shows me one thing. Like, like we're going to all agree on this. Like, you cannot argue what I'm getting ready to say. It is painfully, obviously clear when you look at this in Scripture. And it's the first thing that I want you to write down from this text. If you have your Exodus notebook, pull it out. If you have the app, all the study guides will be in there. Here's the deal. Write it down. Not a single person in here can deny this or argue with it. Here's the first point. God has a plan. You can't read that story and tell me God does not have a plan. God had a plan for Moses God had a plan for Moses' mom. God had a plan for Pharaoh. God had a plan for Pharaoh's daughter. God had a plan for God's people. He had a plan for every one of their lives. And guess what? God has a plan for you. Amazing to see what unfolds in this story. But you gotta, you gotta, you gotta level with me here. You, you guys know you're not here by accident, right? None of this is an accident. You don't think you're here with this people at this time learning about this text in in this church, in this side of the city. Like, you don't think this is by accident. Like, you don't think this is just like a a bunch of choices you made, and then all of a sudden, poop, you ended up here, do you? No. None of your life is an accident. All of it is details that are woven together by God to help you get to the place that he has called and created you to be, to become the man or the woman that he created you and put you on this earth to be all of it is coming together. All of the details behind the scenes, the things that you don't know over time, all because God has a plan. Now I would imagine if you just found out for the first time that God has a plan, not not like just a generic plan, but what if I told you that God has a plan for your life, right? What's the next obvious question? (laughs) What is it? (laughs) Like if God's got a plan, like tell me. I meet with people all the time that'll sit down with me and say, Nathan, like, I just wish I knew what God wanted me to do. I wish I knew the purpose for my, my overall life. Like, not what I'm doing with my life, but like, why am I even here? Why am I in this situation? Why am I in this job, in this city, in this family, with this group of friends? Like, I wish, man, God would just like writing in the sky or something. I wish God would tell me what the purpose was for my life. So over the next few verses, uh, I want to show you some key components to like knowing and understanding God's plan and purpose for your life. Number one, you got you to gotta realize God has a plan and a purpose for your life. But what if there were some key things that you could know and learn today in order to discover that, in order to live a life of purpose. Well, we're going to learn that from Moses' story, but unfortunately, Moses had to learn the hard way. He did a lot of things wrong in his life, but we are going to learn uh, from his mistakes and hopefully avoid some of those mistakes in our lives moving forward. Let's see what this purpose and what this plan of God is all about. In verse 11, Scripture says this, many years later, when Moses had grown up, he went out to visit his own people the Hebrews, and he saw how hard they were forced to work. Remember, they were in slavery. During his visit, he saw an Egyptian beating one of his fellow Hebrews. After looking in all directions just to make sure that that no one was, was watching, Moses killed the Egyptian and hid his body in the sand. That's savage. The next day, when Moses went out to visit his people again, he saw two Hebrew men fighting. Why are you beating up your friend, Moses said to the one who had started the fight. The man replied, who appointed you to be our prince and judge? 
Are you going to kill me as you killed that Egyptian yesterday? See, we learn something um, from Scripture uh, later on in the Bible. We realize that at a young age, Moses realized the purpose and the plan that God had for his life. Moses knew that God would use him to free the Hebrew, the, Is- the Israelite people, from their slavery, that Moses was going to be the leader of the people. Like Moses, like what you just wrote down for number one in your notes, Moses realized that very early on in his life. So he knew God had a purpose, and he knew what the purpose was. And that is where it began to go sideways. He witnessed uh, this Hebrew, one of his people, uh, being beaten by a slave driver. And something crossed his mind. He said, this is my shot. I know that God has called me to be the leader. I know that God has called me to deliver the people. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to step up and I'm going to take care of this situation right now. I'm going to teach this guy a lesson. And then here's what's going to happen. Word will spread that, that that a Hebrew was being beaten by an Egyptian and Moses killed the guy and buried him in the sand. He's going to be an overnight hero. Like, how does that not go viral, right? And then tomorrow, they're going to be putting me up on their shoulders and carrying me out as their leader and chanting my name and all. This is it. This is my chance. And so here's what happened. Here's the mistake that that Moses made. So Moses took things into his own hands. He murdered a guy and buried him into the sand, thinking that all of God's people would think, that's a great idea. He took God's plan and brought it into his own hands. And then something interesting happened. When God's people found out about it, they hated Moses for it. He said, I can't believe you would kill someone. Like, bro, you are crazy. That's not what good leaders do. That's, that's, not, that's not somebody worth following. Like, are you kidding me? Like, get away. We're going to end up being punished for what you just did, Moses. Like, get out of here. We're never going to follow you. We have zero respect from you. It absolutely backfired on Moses' life, which tells us the first thing that we can learn from this. Not only, number one, does God have a plan, but here's what you got to understand about God's plan in your life. Number two, God's plan means doing things God's way. Not God's plan your way, God's plan God's way. Did you know that scripture talks about the plan and the purpose that God has for your life? He talks about a plan for your marriage, for you to have a great, fulfilling, happy marriage. He talks about a plan for your family where your kids will love and honor you and, and, and your, your whole family will love and honor God and worship God together. And like your kids will, they're always going to say yes ma'am and no ma'am and always obey. And like, did you, know, did you know that you can find that in Proverbs? There's just this mutual honor and respect that God promises. Crazy, huh? Did you know that you don't have to be a slave to finances? Like you don't have to be a slave to debt. Did you know that God teaches us how to manage money in a way that you can have a really fulfilling, great, awesome life financially? Do you know that scripture talks about the way that you and I can make wise decisions? I don't care how big or how small the decisions are, but there's a way that we can seek God and and make decisions in a life that is really going to set your life up for success. Like God has a plan, but here's the catch. You ready? God's plan happens God's way. Like, you're not going to be able to take the promises of God and say, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to claim that what you said was true, but here's the deal. Like, I'm not going to do it your way. I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to do it how I want to do it and when I want to do it. That is not how it works. God says, I will deliver on every single promise you can find in this book if, if, if you're willing to do things my way. So all throughout scripture, we have this this promise. Jesus even repeated this in the book of of John. He said, seek first the kingdom of God, then all, all of these things will be added unto you. Uh, The New Testament was written in Greek, and so I decided to look up the Greek word for all. Do you know what it means? All. That means all that stuff you want, the happy family, the happy marriage, the great life, the great career, not being a slave to your finances, the great relationships, the close relationship with God. Jesus said, God will give you all of that if you seek first the kingdom of God. Seek God first and God's plan done God's way will result in the life that you always dreamed, the life that you always wanted. But unfortunately, Moses decided to put Moses first instead of God first. Moses took God's plan for his life and took it into his own hands, and that absolutely did not 
did not end well at all for Moses. Verse 14, then Moses was afraid, thinking everyone knows what I did. And sure enough, Pharaoh had heard what happened and he tried to kill Moses. But Moses fled from Pharaoh and went to live in the land of Midian. This is, I love that the Bible throws this little detail in because this is a warning. This, the Bible doesn't just say, hey, you need to do things God's way. If you want God's plan and purpose for your life, then you need to do things God's way. It doesn't just say that. He says, now let me show you what will happen if you don't do it. Let me show you what will happen if you take God's plan and purpose for your life and try to do it your way. Scripture says Moses was full of fear. He was full of guilt and he was full of shame. And he looked around and said, now everyone knows what I have done. And he was so scared, so full of guilt, so ashamed of himself that he had to flee from the Pharaoh's house and go out to the middle of nowhere desert to a place in Midian. I can promise you that if you try to take God's plan into your hands, you see where it will leave you. Pain, guilt, shame, remorse, fear, on the run, completely isolated in the middle of the desert. It never works out. God has a plan and a purpose for your life, but you've got to understand, you've got to remember, dial in right here, it has to be done God's way. So Moses went from living the dream being a, a son to the princess, like his, his dad was the king of Egypt. He went from that, living in the palace, to now running for his life, homeless in the middle of the wilderness. Here's how the story goes. When, when Moses arrived in Midian, middle of nowhere, like middle of the desert, he sat down beside a well. Now the priests of Midian had seven daughters who came, as usual, to draw water and uh, fill the water troughs for their father's flocks. But some other shepherds came and chased them away. So Moses jumped up and rescued the girls from the shepherd. Then he drew water for their flocks. When, when the girls returned to Reuel, their father, he asked, why are you back so soon today? An Egyptian rescued us from the shepherds, they answered. And then he drew water for us and watered our flocks. And this dad asked what probably every dad said, where is he? <laughs> he seems like a good dude right here. Like he saved my daughters, like, and he did the work for you to really help you. Like, come on, where is he? Why, why did you leave him there? Like invite him to come and eat with us. So Moses accepted the invitation and he settled down there with him. In time, Rule gave Moses his daughter Zipporah to be his wife. Later, she gave birth to a son and Moses named him Gershom. For he explained, I have been a foreigner in a foreign land. Imagine that. Moses, this, this man, was chosen by God. God had a plan for his life, but the reality is Moses completely messed that up, like completely wrecked his life. He killed a guy and buried him in the sand. And then Scripture says as Moses is sitting in his own self-pity, in the middle of nowhere, in a desert, God begins to continue to open up doors. Here's the third thing that I want you to, this is really good news here, okay? Because there may be some people that have made some mistakes in here, like I have. And this is really good news for you. Write this down. Number three, God's plan means failure isn't final. Can, can you imagine? Like, I don't know what you've done in your life, the things that no one knows about. Something tells me. Uh, there's no one in here that has killed a man in the desert and buried him in the sand. If you have, please tell us, right? <laughs> um, but if you haven't, I know you've done some things probably that you're ashamed of, maybe that you're a little embarrassed about that no one else knows. But can I just draw your attention to the fact that God had a plan for Moses' life and even Moses killing a dude and burying him in the desert did not derail God's plan for his life. I know you think you are powerful, but you are not powerful enough to derail God's plan for your life. There's no one in here that God says, whoa, did not see that coming. Wow, you, that's beyond repair like right there, bro. You are on your own. See ya. Don't, I, I, I can't fix that, man. I'm, I'd have to take it all apart and rebuild the whole thing. Might as well go start with someone else. Not a single person in here does God look at that and say, your failure is final. Since you messed up, since you did the wrong thing, then you're out. Somebody else is in. That's not the story. 
Because if God had a plan for Moses' life, and even though Moses didn't choose God's way, God lets Moses know here, your failure is not your final. Can you believe the grace of God here? Moses killed a guy, buried his body in the desert. He lost his family. He lost all of his relationships. He lost his home. He lost everything. And in just a few verses later, Scripture says God gave him a new family, a new home, a new spouse, and a son of his own. God says, I I, want to return to you what you lost because I want you to know, Moses, that failure is not final. That my plan for your life is so much bigger than the mistakes that you make. Here's how the story ends. Verse 23, years passed, the king of Egypt died, but the Israelites continued to groan under their burden of slavery. They cried out for help and their cry rose up to God. God heard their groaning and he remembered his covenant promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that one day he would make a great nation of his people. And he looked down on the people of Israel and knew that it was time to act. Here's the last thing, man, a great reminder that I've struggled with that maybe you struggle with as well. God's plan always happens on God's timing. Did you notice what happened in verse 25? God said, now I am ready to act. You know what the problem was? Moses said the same thing in verse 11. (laughs) Moses was ready to act in verse 11. God wasn't ready to act until verse 25. Moses wasn't willing to wait on God's timing for his life. Moses should have realized God's purpose comes God's way on God's timing. That's it. You can't try to get in front of God. God is weaving things together. He's orchestrating all of the details of your life. Some of it involves other people. Some of it involves, listen to this. One of the reasons why you might be waiting right now is because before God wants to do something for you, he wants to do something in you. Before he can do something through your life, he wants to teach you something in your life. There was still some learning that Moses needed before he could be a leader. There were still some things, some rough edges that needed to be sanded down before he could walk into the destiny that God had called and created him for. But Moses jumped the gun and and tried to do it without God and wrecked it. And that's when I love that middle part because with God, failure is is not final. When you look at this story, I don't know which one of those points come out to you. Maybe today is the first time that you ever heard somebody tell you that God has a plan and a purpose for your life. And maybe, like I said earlier, maybe your next question is like, okay, well, like I'm in. Like if God has a plan, if I'm here on purpose, then like what's my next step? What should I do? I can tell you, I know what your, I know what your first step is to understanding the purpose and the calling that God has placed you here today. The first step is to beginning a relationship with God through his son, Jesus. That's it. Like if you wanna know what God wants you to do today to begin to understand your destiny and purpose of why you're here, here it is. Make a decision right now to make Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life. That's it. That's where it all starts. And watch how your life and your heart begin to change. Watch how God begins to weave the details of the story together in your life. Maybe you knew that already. Maybe you've made a decision for Christ. Maybe, though, the last few years, this last season, if you'd be honest, you took God's plan into your own hands and you wanted to do it your way. And you say, God, I I want what you promised me, but I'm gonna do it my way and on my timing. And maybe you're frustrated because it didn't work out the way you thought it would. So my challenge to you, your next step is, would you just be willing to give God control? Like, could you just take your hands off the wheel and just say, Jesus, take the wheel? We should make a song about that. Could you just say like, God, obviously I'm getting ready to wreck this thing. I've wrecked it a thousand times. And so like, God, could you just, could you just take me to where you want my life to go? Because you know its purpose. You have a plan. I'm tired of fighting you for control. So I'll just give you control. Maybe that's you. Maybe though, you're like Moses in the middle of that chapter. And you're sitting by a well in the middle of the desert. And the reality just struck you. You have royally messed up your life. You've made poor decisions and you're facing the negative consequences of those things. You've missed what God has for you. And maybe during this story, it crossed your mind that God can't use me. 
it's done, man. God turned his back on me a long time ago. It can't be fixed, man. It's beyond repair. Nathan, you don't, like, I, I appreciate your boy Moses, but you don't know what I've done. You don't know what I've said. You don't know where my life is right now. Can I just remind you that with God, failure is not final? That, that you are not powerful enough to derail your life when God has a plan? The scripture says that if you would turn towards God and repent of your sins, then God can place your life back on track and begin to bless you, regardless of what you've done, can begin to give you the life that he promised to give you if you would simply put Jesus first today. Either way, I believe everybody in here has a next step to take and I wanna help you take it. So I want you to take that, that red card that's in the seat back in front of you. And there's a bunch of different decisions that you can make, a bunch of different steps that you can take, man. Our crew, if you'll take that card, drop it in the offering basket on the way out the door, like our crew would love to get in touch with you this week and help you understand how you can begin to walk in the purpose and the plan that God has for you. Hey, if you can do it with Moses, a fugitive murderer on the run, stuck in the middle of the desert with nothing, then he can do it with you. Let me pray for you. God, thanks for including this story in scripture. Uh, thanks that the Bible is not a highlight reel of all of the good things and all of the good decisions that people have made, God, but that you would include huge mistakes like Exodus chapter two, because God, if, if we're honest, we relate to the huge mistakes more than we do the big victories. And so God, as we think about the story of Moses, as we think about the power and the grace and the forgiveness of God in the life of this special man, God, we are encouraged about what you can do in us. So God, I pray that we would take that step, realizing that you have a purpose, realizing that you have a way, realizing that your time is perfect. And even in the midst of failure, you are willing to give us another chance through your son, Jesus. God, give us the wisdom to know what to do with the words that we've just heard. I pray and ask those things in your son, Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand and worship with us?